Hi everyone, in this lecture we will be studying chemical equations, which is a key to understanding chemical language. So wherever you are in the, in the world, whatever the spelling of that particular chemical is, as long as you can see the chemical equation involved, then hopefully as STEM students you will be able to understand and interpret chemical equations. So for our learning targets, we can represent chemical reactions through equations and read and write chemical equations. So this will just be very short. We take note of the chemical symbols or the, the symbols that are used in chemical equations. So the first four are usually written as subscripts uh, beside and right after the chemical compound or the chemical formula. So for, you, for example, you have uh, S enclosed in parentheses that represents that the compound is solid. If it's L, that's liquid, and then if it's G, it's gas, all right? Uh, however, if the gas can also be, uh, the gas can also be represented by an upward arrow. That means it can escape from the chemical reaction, okay? Or there is an evolution of gas. Uh, for catalysts, these are substances that speed up the reaction. Uh, for example, is H2SO4. They are usually written on top of the arrow, okay, which represents to form. Okay? And then application of heat is uh, given by this triangle, delta. And then if you see the plus sign, that means it reacts with. So Take note also that there are seven elements that exist as diatomic molecules in its free or uncombined state or in their natural state. And we call these seven elements our super seven. So for example, when you talk of hydrogen alone in chemical equations or chemical formula, they are usually represented as H2. Okay, so this is the elemental hydrogen, the elemental oxygen. Or in other terms, you have hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, fluorine gas, and so on. Okay, So in their natural state, they exist as diatomic molecules. And we call them by, by their elemental name only. Okay. So in chemistry, a chemical reaction or the change that has happened is usually described using chemical formulas and the symbols that were mentioned a while ago. So in here, I have a balanced chemical equation, but we'll go to balancing later on. But here, it represents the reaction of ammonia, NH3, with oxygen. Okay, and then it produces the following compounds, uh, nitrogen monoxide and water. Okay, so how do we read this chemical equation? Then we just say that four molecules of ammonia, NH3, react, okay, represented by the plus sign, with five molecules of oxygen, O2, to produce. So the arrow here represents to produce, and then the, uh, the arrow is pointing to the right. So this is a unidirectional reaction. And then that means all of these, uh, under given circumstances, will be converted into NO, or four molecules of nitrogen monoxide, and six molecules of water. Okay. Or we can also read it as four moles, now in terms of the mole, four moles of ammonia <clears throat> react with five moles of oxygen gas to produce four moles of NO and six moles of H2O. So that means <clears throat> the coefficients here represent the number of molecules that are reacting and are produced or the number of moles for each particular molecule. Now, if there is no coefficient, that means there is only one molecule or there is only one mole. But we do not uh, write one anymore as we do in uh, mathematics. Now, let's proceed into writing chemical equations. Okay, So, chemical symbols, take note, give a before and after picture of a chemical reaction. So, they somehow tell us about the transformation of reactants into products. Okay, so another example is the reaction of magnesium oxide and carbon okay, to produce carbon monoxide and magnesium. So in here, we can read this as magnesium oxide reacts with carbon 
to form carbon monoxide and magnesium. So an important skill in writing a chemical equation is actually to give, okay, to know the chemical formula for each, uh, for each compound. All right, so you must be skilled at formula writing and naming chemical nomenclature and formula writing. So another example, when magnesium ribbon, or that's elemental magnesium, is heated and reacts with oxygen, gas, and air, magnesium oxide is formed. So when you say magnesium ribbon, that is the elemental form of magnesium, so it's not bonded to anything. So we just have the following, Mg, okay, plus oxygen gas. As we said, uh, oxygen is part of the super 7, so it exists as a diatomic molecule. And then it reacts with uh, magnesium to form magnesium oxide, so MgO. And then how do we know that our product is MgO? So we take note that uh, the bond between magnesium and the bond between magnesium and oxygen is actually ionic. So that means for magnesium oxide to form, then the we, the participating species are the magnesium two plus Mg two plus and oxygen atoms. All right, oxygen atoms in their ionized form, so that's O2 minus. And remember that when you crisscross, okay, in the if you try to remember our lesson on ionic bond formation, so if you crisscross and disregard the sign, you can get the resulting chemical formula, which is practically Mg2O2. And since it is an ionic compound, we reduce it into its simplest whole number ratios such that we will be having MgO, all right? So that is uh, the, the principle behind writing MgO plus O2 uh, yielding MgO. So here are a few more examples of writing chemical equations. So for example, you have nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas forming nitrogen trihydride or ammonia. So nitrogen gas is represented by N2 and H2 for hydrogen gas. And then you must know that the chemical formula for ammonia is NH3. And then you have noticed there that uh, the subscripts are already put in place to denote the state of the, the compounds upon the reaction. Another example is when sodium hydroxide combines with phosphoric acid to form a sodium phosphate and water. So you must know what the chemical formula is for sodium hydroxide, that is NaOH, and then combine with for phosphoric acid, that's H3PO4 uh, aqueous, to form sodium phosphate and water. So notice that uh, in chemical, chemical reactions, they usually exist as aqueous forms, all right? And then much more for phosphoric acid, which really gives us from the name itself that it is aqueous, okay? And water in its pure liquid, liquid form is denoted by L, the subscript L, all right? So that is sodium hydroxide reacting with phosphoric acid to form sodium phosphate and water. Another example is potassium hydroxide. Uh, we know that potassium hydroxide has a chemical formula KOH and we, it reacts with cupric sulfate. So when you say cupric sulfate, the charge there of copper is plus two, okay? Yielding potassium sulfate and the precipitate uh, copper hydroxide. So if you are going to write the ionic equations in here, so there there is potassium K and then let's try to break it down into its component uh, ions, all right? So potassium hydroxide, that's KOH, okay? And then let's say they react with cupric sulfate. So since it's cupric here, we know that the that the charge is 2 plus and there is another so uh, there is another entity the sulfate ion so4 
uh, 2 minus. So this is actually your net ionic equation. Okay, and then once this, ha once this happens, let's say as per the sentence or per the description, it formed a potassium sulfate. So K, so what is happening here is the K plus reacts with the sulfate ion. So this now K plus plus SO4 2 minus. So if you crisscross disregard the sign, the potassium atom will have a subscript of 2 and then SO4. So there is no subscript resulting from potassium since it's only plus 1. And copper 2 hydroxide. So when you say copper 2 hydroxide, the charge of copper 2 has been placed with uh, the hydroxide ion, the whole hydroxide group. So that's OH, OH sub 2. All right. So this is practically what happens, uh, what is the statement uh, telling us, okay? So K2SO4, 2. However, if you, if instead you want just to write the chemical formulas, then it is given in here, right? Uh, put, this is potassium hydroxide and this is copper 2 sulfate, okay? Then resulting to copper hydroxide and uh, potassium sulfate. You can change the order, by the way, of how uh, it is arranged. Now, according to our solubility rules, okay, uh, for compounds containing the hydroxide ion, okay, if, if it is not an alkali metal or it is not ammonium, uh, it is not paired with ammonium ion, then it is usually a precipitate. Okay? So that's why there is the solid form here. Okay, uh, Precipitate is represented by S or sometimes a downward arrow beside the, the chemical formula is drawn. Okay, so that also denotes precipitate. Uh, another example is when zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid forming zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So if you need not go through the uh, ionic equations, then you can just write zinc, which is in, an, in its elemental form. Zinc solid, okay, a metal, uh, reacts with hydrochloric acid, HCl aqueous, forming hydrogen gas, H2G, and uh, zinc chloride, aqueous also. All right. Uh, last example would be sodium chloride and silver nitrate combined together, putting or producing sodium nitrate and the precipitate silver chloride. So I'd like you to try this out. You may pause the video and try to see what the answer is. So if you answered NaCl aqueous, Ag and O3 aqueous, and then Na and O3 and AgCl, which is your precipitate also S, then you are correct. All right, so more or less you must have this following answer. Okay. So that's it for chemical equations, reading and writing chemical equations. Uh, stay tuned for the next few lessons.